Okay, let's continue. So we've imported a data set. Let's go ahead and make a new experiment now. So let's come up here, experiments. Uh, you don't have these in yours probably, but go ahead and click new down here and we're going to make a blank experiment. Uh, by the way, you probably just noticed that there's all these other options here of experiments or samples. We'll go through a bunch of these through the rest of this class to teach some of these different techniques. But this is very useful. It's a, a resource to pay attention to. Anyway, so here in this view, we get this uh, kind of gives you a, you know, a, a blank canvas to start putting things into. And we're just going to click and drag options from over here and drop them in here. So for starters, let's click and drag our data set. So if we um, expand this out, go to my data sets, we have this one bi bike buyers that we just imported. Let's click and drag that in. And that made that incredibly small. Let me make this a bit bigger, uh, not that big. All right, bike buyers data set. Now let's go ahead and change our name too, by the way. This is, we're gonna call this pre-processing. So uh, this bike buyers data is actually incredibly pre-processed already. I just wanna show you some of the features and what's available in, in real life. You're gonna get data with missing values. Uh, you're gonna be pulling data from multiple data sets into the same place. Um, but for now, we're going to show some of the basic features, and then I'll show you some advanced ones later on. So uh, we have a bunch of other options here of different techniques we can use. Go ahead and break out statistical functions right here, and let's grab this summarize, oops, summarize data option. Okay, all you do is you click here on this little circle, drag and connect it here to the next one. So on each pill, you have a few options. Data set, download, visualize, we're going to use visualize a lot. Click on this one, and it's just going to show us the raw data. So here's everything that we just pulled in. Um, I can click on any field, and it's going to give me these descriptive, st descriptive statistics right over here. Mean, uh, because this is a binary variable. Median of zero simply means that there's more zeros in the data set. Standard deviation, that makes sense. Let's click on a categorical variable. So here, notice it gives us a nice little visualization automatic uh, and even the option here to compare it to let's do married by children gives us a box plot because they're both categorical let's do married by age and that'll give us there we go well it's still a box plot that works um, let's I even have the option I can if I have a variable like age that's not normally distributed I can go ahead and perform a logarithmic transformation on it right here Remember all those things we had to do in Excel by hand? This is nice. Anyway, uh, let's close this one out. What we need to do next is actually run this analysis so you can see what summarized data does. So click, come down here and click Run. Wait for a second. Okay, here's our little processing box. It's going to tell us up here how long it's taking. There we go, all finished. Now right-click on Summarized Data and go to visualize and let's see what we've got okay counts min max mean all those things we were getting over here plus a few more which is kind of nice look skewness kurtosis isn't that nice no longer have to calculate these things in excel ahead of time we can come and do it right here in azure ml studio so our list of variable names are down here on the left hand side and I can take a look and see, okay, do I have anything violating some of my assumptions? Are any of these over one? Yep, I've got one right here that's over one. Got a couple more down here that are over one. Well, sorry, less than negative one or over one. Here's one that's a little bit more. What, which field am I looking at here? Kurtosis. I know the word's not kurtot, but it's something like that. Marital status, gender. Uh, there are different, various standards. Um, uh, there are those that will say two is a better standard for these uh, in terms of uh, how far violating it goes. So anyway, this is a very clean data set. I can tell because these numbers are all fairly low for skewness and kurtosis. But uh, it's a nice way to, uh, oh, and here's our box plot quartiles. We won't worry, or sorry, our standard deviations. Uh, but we won't worry about that right now. Okay, let's do something else. Oh, wait, no, actually go back in here. One other thing I want to show you that's very useful right here is missing value count. Okay, because this data has been super clean, there are no missing values. In real life, that's gonna be less common. We have some other features here. Just come and type in missing, give it a second. Here we go, clean missing data. 
or missing values scrubber. Uh, no, sorry, this is the new one. That was the old one that we used to use. Clean missing data. So we don't have any missing data, so it's not a problem. But we have various options here for cleaning. Oh, whoops, let me click on that again. Okay, so let me explain some of these. Some of them are obvious. Uh, custom value substitution, you can just say replace every blank with a negative 999. Um, there are situations where that's useful. I won't get into that right now, though. Uh, replace with mean, median mode. If you do this, this is a common technique, but it's sort of an old school technique. This allows you to keep all the other data in the record, but the, the downside of this is you're going to lose some, some power in your analysis. But if you're uh, worried about losing the record, then that's an option. Remove entire row. This is what we used to do for better, rep for more validity. We just have to get rid of the row. Um, remove entire column. I've never done that before, but that's, you're losing an entire field across all data sets. I guess if you have, if you're missing that whole column for almost everybody, that would be a situation to use it. But what I want to explain are these two options. Replace using mice, replace using probabilistic PCA. These are both techniques to predict based on all the other values for the, for the record. Uh, so if I, let's say for example, I'm missing someone's um, marital status. What it'll do is it'll look at all the other values that that record has filled in um, and then imagine, like remember when we ran uh, linear multiple regression in Excel, imagine running a regression on marital status as the dependent variable and then creating a prediction calculator and using all the other variables for that person to predict their marital status. That's what MICE is doing. Now, probabilistic PCA is similar, but not exactly the same. I don't want to get into the details. Uh, PCA stands for Principal Components Analysis, uh, but here's the rules I would follow. If you have relatively low amounts of missing data, I would use MICE, and I th this one will be more accurate. However, when you have larger amounts of missing data, I would use probabilistic PCA. It's going to be faster um, and probably more accurate than mice because this one is best when you have most of the data filled in. It loses accuracy when you have large amounts of missing data. So um, I can't give you a hard and fast rule on when to use both, but in generally speaking, less missing data use mice, more missing data use probabilistic PCA. Okay, I want to show you one more very useful pre-processing step that we had to do manually in Excel that is incredibly useful here. Since we don't have missing data in this data set, I'm going to go ahead and kill this one for now and delete that pill off of there. Let's come back here, and we're going to search for normalize. There we go. Under data transformation, scale and reduce, just so you can see, I can go back here and remove that. Uh, data transformation, here's where a lot of these options are. Um, scale and reduce. All right, we want normalized data. Okay. Okay. We go from there into there. So what does normalized data do for us? Remember when we were doing our regressions and our cluster analyses in Tableau? Because ver different variables were on different scales, uh, that created a problem at times. Not necessarily for the prediction, but um, in the cluster analysis, it made some variables have a stronger weight and stronger pull in determining the cluster than others. So we have a variety of techniques here to normalize. Z-score, what that'll do, um, let me show you how this works. Uh, launch column selector, what we say here is we want to convert some values in our data to a Z-score. So do we start with no columns and pick which columns we want to convert to a Z-score, or do we start with all columns and then remove the ones we don't want to calculate a Z-score for? Well, obviously a Z-score only applies for numeric data. You can't do that with uh, categorical data. So let's start with no columns and say include column type anything that's numeric. Or, uh, the, and a numeric will include integer. Integer means it has no decimal places. Double means it's got lots of decimal places. So numeric includes both of these below. Um, or include all those that are strings. Or I could say, uh, so if I start with no columns, I can't exclude. Or I can start with all columns and say exclude anything that is oh i've got to list them out one at a time so i can come in here and uh oh i need to sorry i need to show you something here i don't want to do this for normalized data or, or summarized data sorry i want to go straight from my uh because the summarized data is what produced all the, those um my new records here are these calculations performed so i don't want to come out of summarized data what I want to do instead is I want to delete this um, connection right there 
leave that one over there and pull another one off bike buyers down to this guy. So we're normalizing the original data set. This is just something, a uh, summarization that we can use to determine which variables that we want to apply some transformations to. So uh, back here, launch column selector. I want to start with no columns, or I, really there's obviously many ways to do the same thing. Exclude anything. Uh, you know, I like to start with no columns, actually, and include column type, anything that's numeric. Let's do that. And that will convert all of them to a z-score. So let's go ahead and run that. Give that a minute. Here we go. Let's view this. Transformed data set. Perfect. Visualize. So anything that was numeric before, uh, a z-score ranges, oh, what's the number? It's like negative 3 point something to positive 3 point something, something like that. But basically, it's put all of my numeric variables on the exact same scale so that we won't have that uh, um, some of those problems of some of them pulling uh, and uh, having a bigger or smaller effect than the others. Other options I have here that are very useful. Um, I can convert to a min-max. Remember when we were testing for skewness and kurtosis, we wanted to use uh, logarithmic transformations. So let me explain some of these features. So what I can do next, now that that's calculated, is grab another summarized data, come and pull it here off the normalized data set, and uh, let's run that again. And I want to see if I have improved any of my, um, or changed any of my skewness and kurtosis issues with this new data set. So remember previously, I think I can look at that while it's running, yeah. My biggest problems with skewness and kurtosis, uh, where are those at? Right here. I had issues on these two variables, which are marital status and gender numeric. These are both 0, 1 variables. Uh, which makes sense, so it's not really... Eesh. I'm not as worried about those because they're binary. It's, well, let's just see how it's changed them down here. Anyway, let's view this one. Visualize. Scroll over. All right, sample skewness and kurtosis. Not changed a bit. Why is that? It's because a z-score is not meant... It's not a logarithmic transformation. It's not meant to fix it. Okay, well, then let's come back here. Go back to our normalized data and change this. Um, by the way, this ton H converts it from a 0 to 1 scale. Um, I guess there's different situations where you may want that. I'm, well, I'm sure obviously there are. But let's change it to, let's try logistic and log normal. So I'm going to do this on all numeric variables. Great. Uh, actually, honestly, I don't really want to do it on all of them. Let me take this back. What I want to do instead is include only those two that I was kind of worried about. There we go. Sometimes I have to click on that a few times for it to show up. Uh, no, let's just compare. I think we had, I think we had a little bit of a skewness issue on education. No, sorry, I'm. I know. Let's just let's do age, and income, and children. I don't want to use any of these binary ones here. Yeah, why not education with that one as well? Okay. Run it on those. Run. Okay. So let's recall while that's running what they were for those variables. So age, cars, income, children. These ones right here. Let's go over. Let's see what those values were. Okay, here's what we've got. Um, none of those were too bad, actually. Uh, but let's see how much they've changed, at least. We've got a negative 1.27 for... Oh, commute distance numeric, that's fine. Again, because this is super clean data, all those looked really, well, looked really good. But let's see how it's changed it now. Visualize. Let's go to commute distance numeric. Let's take a look. Um, not a whole lot different, pretty close but it's changed some of them slightly. In fact, I think it's actually made it, some of them worse. Well, not really, it's about the same. That's fine, it doesn't always work depending on the data. Let's try uh, log normal on those same, same ones. Go ahead and rerun.
Still thinking. Almost, no, here we go, okay. Visualize uh, skewness, kurtosis. Actually, these ones right here, uh, no, down here it was uh, commute distance. Oh, it's still exactly the same. Well, that's okay. There's more than one way to try to resolve skewness and kurtosis issues. A logarithmic transformation, transformation is just one. But there's also researchers who argue that, you know, skewness and kurtosis are really just descriptive measures of your data and you don't really need to worry about transforming them anyway. But I just wanted you to see that you've got a lot of options um, right here under normalizing data transformations you can make uh, that are pretty useful. So that's all I'm going to show you now for pre-processing, um, handling missing data, normalizing data. Um, let's move on. Oh, I do want to show you right here. If you want a complete video, this one here under pre-processing data, they give a great example in this one of when you have two different data sets that you want to join together. For example, they had some uh, flight delay data and some weather data, and they needed to join it based on the time of day so they could predict flight delays based on bad weather. So they give a good example of pre-processing a timestamp so that you can connect the time of day that the flight was delayed to the weather uh, data based on the time of day and then uh, get it all ready together to predictively model. So it's worth taking a look at if you have the time.